are very honored today to have the Honorable Consul General of the Republic of Korea here to uh, give us opening remarks, Mr. Sun Joon Kim. Good morning. Uh, I traveled Korea and came back last Friday, still I have jet lag. And uh, my uh, economic officer prepared uh, some text, uh, but uh, Dr. Gao told me that you, you have only less than 10 minutes, so I can uh, do that, but uh, I will try to do my best. Dr. Ken Harmon, uh, Provost of Kenna State University, Dr. May Gavin, Chair of the SOPO. Distinguished guests, uh, ladies and gentlemen, first I would like to thank Dr. Harmon and Dr. Gao for inviting me to this symposium. Actually, I'm a new Consul General of Korea. I've been here only uh, five months. Uh, then, but uh, I have a public appearance uh, now. This is tense. Quite good for a diplomat. <clears throat> but you know, I met uh, Governor Deal uh, two weeks ago. Uh, he told me that uh, you are the uh, you are representing Korea in Georgia. But uh, why don't you promote Georgia in Korea? So I did that uh, during my trip back to Seoul last two weeks. I'm pleased to have the opportunity to speak with business leaders, scholars, and opinion leaders about partnership opportunities between Asia and the United States. As the largest Asia business conference in the southern states, SOPO is helping business and academic communities build networks and find cooperation opportunities between Asia and the U.S. I look forward to many creative ideas to future partnership, which will be inspired by this symposium today. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, today I will talk briefly about the Asia-US partnership, the relationship between Korea and the US, because I am representing Korea, and the Korea-US free trade agreement and its economic impact and new business opportunities with Korea, which are just on the horizon. Asia has become a key component of the global economy, hosting three of the ten largest economies, namely China, Japan, and India, which account for more than 35% of the total global GDP. You know, do I have accent? <laughs> you have any difficulty to understand? I was in Washington DC uh, in 2001 when was, uh, there was a 911. Then I've been in Boston and I've been in Los Angeles. This is a uh, first posting in the United States. I'm very lucky. So uh, my son is uh, now in the military uh, under the uh, General Champo uh, in Seoul, Yongsan. And uh, he told me that, uh, am I American citizen or not? <laughs> No, uh, diplomat kids cannot have a citizenship of America. Oh, I forgot the line. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> According to the Asian Development Bank, Asia could regain the dominant uh, economic position it held before the Industrial Revolution some 300 years ago by increasing its share of GDP to 52% by 2050, with a collective population of 4.4 billion and 60% of the uh, world's population, Asia has a substantial role to play our manufacturers and consumers in keeping the world economy buoyant. The U.S. and Asian countries share a deep interest in a close partnership this shared interest spurred the creation of the Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation, or APEC, in 1989. The U.S. has continued to strengthen its economic and trade relationships with Asian countries by aggressively making 
free trade agreements with South Korea, Singapore, Australia, Oman, and Bahrain. In addition to these initiatives, the Trans-Pacific Partnership, or TPP, is currently being negotiated after the initiation by the United States in order to enhance trade and investment among the 12 participating countries. While economic interdependence among Asian countries has been steadily growing, regional and bilateral cooperation and trust has been often challenged and even disrupted. The tension has been caused primarily by historical issues, maritime territorial disputes, and hegemony competition in recent years. Some scholars call this unusual situation in Asia uh, Asian paradox. From the US point of view, each country in Asia is an important partner in terms of long-term strategic, military, and economic interest. The US has tried to mediate disputes between countries in Asia, and there has been steady progress in regional cooperation so far. Ladies and gentlemen, the relationship between Korea and the United States is the strongest it has ever been. President Obama and many American leaders have referred to the strength of these ties on numerous occasions. The cooperation between our countries has evolved to jointly address regional and global challenges, including Ebola response and humanitarian assistance for underdeveloped countries, as well as international security and environmental issues. These developments illustrate that our past security alliance has expanded beyond its original purpose as a linchpin for peace and stability in the Asia-Pacific region. It is now a comprehensive global package. Our countries celebrated the 60th anniversary of the Korea-US Security Alliance last year. The modern industrialization of Korea, which has been often called the miracle of the Han River, would not have been possible without such a staunch alliance with the United States. Another important landmark of the Korea-US relationship, the Coros Free Trade Agreement, was put into effect in March 2012. With the FTA in place, the two countries established a new foundation which will continue to strengthen a strategic alliance worthy of 21st century in favor of the United States. In the state of Georgia alone, 60 Korean companies have invested $4.8 billion and created 15,000 jobs. Korea ranks second among foreign investors in Georgia with regard to job creation and investment totals. That's why Governor Deal likes me much. <laughs> Service trade between the two countries also continue to grow with significant gains in favor of the United States. In 2013, U.S. service exports to Korea were recorded at $21 billion, making Korea the third largest market for U.S. services in Asia. I have a very important thing. So can I have a couple of minutes to finish my speech? Two minutes? Okay. <laughs> I'd like to briefly highlight some opportunities of which business in the United States can take advantage of. First, FTA uh, has provided new opportunities for U.S. exporters to sell more commodities, including agriculture, to Korean customers. The U.S. International Trade uh, Commission, or ITC, estimates that tariff cuts alone will boost the U.S. commodity exports to Korea by $10 billion each year once the agreement is fully implemented in 2022. Uh, Korean companies uh, will continue to expand the direct investment in the United States. Over the last five years, Korean companies' investment in the United States has been primarily concentrated in the sectors of automobiles, electronic components, chemical products, and natural resource development. Perhaps the most significant opportunity for the United States is the future unification of the two countries.
Korea. In January 2014, President of the Republic of Korea, Park Geun-hye, announced the landmark initiative which will begin to lay the groundwork for unification of South and North Korea. No one can yet pinpoint when the unification will occur, but I'm sure that it will happen sooner than we might expect. I believe that a unified Korea with a total population of 80 million people will open up new opportunities for further growth of the economic partnership between Korea and the United States. When, when South Korea's capital and technology are combined with abundant natural resources and 25 million disciplined workforce in North Korea, a new United Korea would be a bonanza for Korea and perhaps even new gold rush for the United States too. In closing, I hope this symposium will pave the way to increase business opportunities between Asia and the United States. Korea is one of the most attractive investment destinations in Asia, with many promising business partners like Samsung, Kia, Hyundai, LG, POSCO, and many more. I'd like to encourage you to seek the excellent investment opportunities in Korea and to explore the business partnerships available in Korea. Thank you. Thank you very much.